Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon and welcome to Knowledge Talks. A weekly entertainment and knowledge sharing program aired live specifically to share with you topics that contribute knowledge to society. Each week, Knowledge Talks hosts and invite guests that are experts, professionals and leaders from the field that bring wealth of knowledge to you. Knowledge Talks also highlights and promotes talents in the country that contribute knowledge and success to the nation. This program, ladies and gentlemen, is a weekly session that I will have with you every Tuesday at 5 p.m. I'm your host, Tarek Al Barwani, along with our studio engineer, DJ Saleh, for an hour bringing you free knowledge at your doorsteps on Oman Radio FM 90.4. Okay, stay tuned after this break for an interesting personality and someone that we have a lot to learn from. Okay, welcome back to Knowledge Talks, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Farqan Hilal Al Barwani, along with our studio engineer, DJ Saleh, with you here today live on Oman Radio FM 90.4. Now, what would it take to become a CEO? and run an organization successfully. Well, who can better respond and guide you to such a leadership role other than my winning guest and personality today? Masha Allah, my winning personality and guest today is Dr. Amr Arwas. Dr. Amr is the group chief executive officer of Tasnia Oil and Gas Technology Group and has also served as the chief executive officer of Oman Telecommunication Company, Oman Tel. Dr. Amor also served in various academic and leadership positions at Sultan Qaboos University and is still in fact serving in a various educational and technological policy forums here in the Sultanate. Now that, apart from being a board member of different board of directors of reputed institutions. Dr. Amr, mashaAllah, has been awarded several times for his achievements. To name some, he was recognized as the best transformational leader in June 2014. Best pioneer leader in Samina region at the Convergence to Oman 2013 conference. Our topic today is about being a great CEO, and you know what? Dr. Amr, mashallah, was also the best CEO award in the telecom sector. Dr. Amr holds a PhD in computer science and artificial, and artificial intelligence from Sussex University of UK. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Dr. Amr. Assalamu alaikum wa wa barakatuh and thank you for a generous introduction, Tara. In fact, thanks to you, Dr. Amr, uh, uh, you have, mashallah, 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 a great track record from your profession, a great track record from leading the largest telecom uh, company in Oman, uh, and now, mashallah, in oil and gas, uh, the, the group CEO of Tasnir. And you have received many, many awards. In fact, Dr. Amr, I'm a person who has been following you for many, many, many years. I remember the first time I met you was at uh, the, the SQU, when you're the dean at SQU uh, uh, via Dr. Khamis. From that day I left the door, believe me, I have been following you every day. And the reason is because I admire everything that you do. Mashallah, mashallah. Jazakallah khair. That was starting to sound scary until you explained. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'll tell you honestly, Dr. Amr, it, 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 for me, whatever I've introduced you today during the program is very, very little. Because if I were to introduce you, I'd better write a book. Thank you very much. MashaAllah. Uh, Dr. Amr, um, you have a track record, which is a gold, MashaAllah. Now, the goal of our program today is to ensure we learn how did you achieve that and how did you achieve to become where you are today. Uh, so to start, I would like to learn from you. One question that I have is that since you started your career, or whether it's your life, did you have a did you have a plan, or did was there was I mean the vision of where you are today, was it there uh, with you, or, or it, how, how did it happen? It wasn't in the shape and form that that I enjoy now. However, uh, you know, dreams and purpose in life continues to evolve, and I, I keep telling people that. Uh, 
you know, the, the difference between humans and other uh, creatures is that we have a purpose in life and we have the ability to continue to refine it and evolve it according to uh, our capabilities and the possibilities and opportunities that uh, are presented to us. Okay. Mashallah, mashallah. So normally you find people who are uh, saying that they have to have a vision for a number of, number of many of years, you know, five years, ten years and so on. Would you sort of uh, uh, um, accredit some kind of a thought? Of course. I, I think uh, having a vision uh, and, and a purpose in life is very important because it acts as the single most significant driver for working hard for trying to succeed it's a driver to in empower yourself to have all the tools to get there uh, i always quote a, a story from the indigenous americans the red indians uh, uh, where they actually when they grow up and before they're able to join the chief's uh, majlis so to speak uh, they have to go on a vision quest for 10 days to two weeks okay and then when they come back from that vision quest they have to announce to everyone their purpose in life, their vision for their future. Okay. And that then becomes their name. Yeah. So if your vision was to be a pilot, say it's, uh, uh, for an example's sake, you would be called something like uh, fly above the clouds okay. and, uh, and, and so on. Um, you know, if you want to be a good horseman, race is the wind. But then that becomes your unique purpose that you're called with every day. So yeah. every time somebody calls you by your name, you remember your purpose in life. But that yeah. can be basically uh, uh, inhibitive uh, of success if you do not have the capabilities or the opportunities are not presented to you. I believe that such a purpose has to be there, but it has to be revised from time to time, okay. depending on the evolving capabilities, the evolving uh, opportunities and the ecosystem around you that presents you with challenges, opportunities and so on. So yes, have a purpose. Have your eye on it, but know that it is a changeable, evolving purpose. Okay. okay. Now, some kids uh, or small, some, some, I mean, people who are, who are young and said, when I, when I grow up, I would like to become a policeman. Some of them would like to become a, 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 a teacher or so on. What was your vision or your wish when you were young? And is it, has it, uh, have you achieved that or overachieved? Well, you know, there were some that I didn't achieve, but uh, maybe gladly so. But uh, uh, at the beginning, I remember the first time I was presented with that question. I was uh, just finishing a competition between schools. You know, they, they pick four people from each school, Musabaqat yeah. Awal Talab in Arabic. So we go to this premier students competition where uh, at the end of the competition, after we won, it was a ready interview, actually. And I was asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? The immediate answer was a sports teacher, a PE teacher, Mashallah. because I was inspired by about our PE teacher. He was uh, someone who was a very skilled person in a number of sports and was challenging us to uh, excel at those sports. And I loved sports at the time, uh, although I was uh, pretty good at the other subjects, but I picked this to be my job. But then it evolved as I started reading about the emergence of computers okay. and decided to be a computer engineer mm -hmm. and then ended up uh, achieving a software engineer title and mm -hmm. later on all the way to a PhD in Mashallah. computer science and uh, artificial intelligence. And then as I was studying and uh, seeing the impact of uh, lecturers on my life and, and, and my progression, I, I felt maybe the best thing is to be a lecturer. Okay. And, and then this is talking about evolving from the profession itself to yeah. actually trying to share knowledge. Okay. And I moved to Sultan Qaboos University as a You know, the, the first that started as an academician of research. Yes. So I did two years of pure research and then came back to Oman to do teaching. Okay, mashallah. You have been involved in many industries, mashallah, telecom, education, now oil and gas. If you were to pick some of the achievements, some of your best achievement, what would that be? from all the sectors. So all the way education, telecom, and now oil and gas. I think building teams, building succession plans that work. At uh, Sultan Qaboos University, I'm very proud of the fact that 
when I left uh, CIS, which is the Center for Information Systems at Sultan Qaboos University, my successor was my next in line. And then when I left the deanship at Sultan Qaboos University, the assistant dean at the time became the next dean. Mashallah. And I'm now so very proud when I left Oman till one of the two CXOs, uh, the CFO became the CEO. Yep. I think the single most achievement that I can be proud of that I've always built a succession plan and built uh, strong leaders who can take over and carry on uh, the success stories. Mashallah, mashallah. Tell me one thing, and this is a question that I personally would like uh, to uh, to learn. With all the great knowledge that you have and skills, uh, 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 and of course you've got family commitments, how do you manage your time? Because Dr. Amr, mashallah, you are part of a lot of board. You are also uh, 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 the group CEO of, of one of the large uh, oil and gas company. Uh, one, once upon a time, you were leading uh, Armantel and you've created leaders now to take over uh, 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 your role in Armantel. How do you manage your time? Well, you have to sacrifice. There are things that you have to sacrifice. Uh, and, uh, you know, one thing that I always promote is for one to have a good time with family and to have uh, active hobbies because a lot of people announce hobbies yeah. that they don't practice and I do hobbies that I actively practice and I have friends too but you pick hobbies that are not so demanding on time okay. say some that are seasonal for example one of my hobbies is crossing the desert okay. it's a Washington. seasonal one yeah. so you wait until the season comes and then the rest of the time is for your work and family and you can't pick a, a daily demanding hobby and be able to succeed because that then takes a slot of your time per day. So I, I think, you know, I always say that the, uh, one thing that distinguishes uh, successful uh, people from the not so very successful people is how they manage the 24 hours that we're all given. Hmm. And I think you, you have to sacrifice certain pleasures in life. Uh, Definitely family is not one of them, mm. but you need to still uh, have your social capital built. You know, you need to make this balance of uh, uh, keeping a social capital that allows you to survive in harmony with the environment around you. But also that social capital can be useful for your business. It's part of your uh, strength, so to speak. And, and uh, of course, keep your kids because that's your future and family uh, sure. w within your uh, daily uh, schedule as something that you cannot touch uh, it's tough but you have to give up lots of other usual daily pleasures that uh, a lot of people enjoy in uh, our day and time okay so it was definitely not a walk in the park mashallah to definitely you not mashallah i'm Tell rediscovering certain leisures in life mashallah mashallah now one thing that i've learned today uh, about you because as i said i i'm one of the people who is very constantly following about you dr amr and i admire all the things that you have done no doubt among the people omani is here who have set a great example and have also a great when you say an example of ceos you are a great example and in fact today we're going to talk about ceos and how can people become a ceo in fact how can you have many more of dr amr as well in Oman, uh, inshallah. Uh, i feel there are many with the with the potential and many who are already acting uh, as uh, full-fledged ceos and doing great i'm very proud of every single one of them and they're also creating other leaders under them and i also see a number of uh, bright people with the right levels of energy, the right commitment uh, are waiting for their chances. And I, I, I also am optimistic about the fact that uh, our economy will continue to present those people with opportunities to lead the organization. Inshallah, with, with people like yourself and your leadership and wisdom, we will have many, many people pick up uh, uh, great roles, inshallah. inshallah. Tell us about the challenges. I would like to know some example of challenges and setbacks that you have faced in your life since your uh, uh, since your school days, um, university day, uh, Amantel, uh, and now at Tasnia, the challenges that you faced, some of example, and how did you tackle them? Yeah, well, there were many uh, challenges, of course, uh, to cover in one program, uh, but many I was able to overcome, some I wasn't, so you fail. Uh, in some and then you discover that you're just unable to do this and then you you have to be able to make a choice to quit this particular thing and go for something that in many cases turns out to be better um, but the challenge was basically creating the balance between the stakeholders uh, i think that is the single most haunting uh, 
uh, challenge that I had throughout my career. I've, I've always been conscious of uh, managing the interests of the uh, various stakeholders. And that's normally simple in certain organizations, uh, uh, say, for example, in the academia, it was simpler than the, uh, the uh, telecom sector, for example, mm -hmm. particularly in a company that is a quasi-government company, because then you have a different set of stakeholders. Uh, in the academia, your stakeholders are your students, your fellow researchers, your management, and, you know, uh, the recipient of uh, any service that you give as a, an educationalist. In the telecom sector, your stakeholders, if you just take one, which is the investor, has multi-dimensions. You have the international investors of both Oman Share, you have mm -hmm. the local citizens of both Oman Share, and those are diverse. Some are institutions, some are individuals, some are retirees who put all their money there. And then you have the, the government, who is a direct investor with a different set of rules, regulations, and expectations. And then you have the other set of government who are your, your regulator, your policy maker, yeah. and the various government institutions that benefit from your services. And for one to balance all of those against the most important stakeholder, who is the uh, customer and the staff. You know, you have to balance all the, the, the mix of uh, investor stakeholder uh, yeah. segment mm. to a staff segment and again there's diversity in that yeah. in terms of age and generation gaps and so on but then also the sta the customer segment you have wholesale customers you have uh, corporate customers you have uh, uh, you know when the individual customers you have for you to be able to manage a uh, multifaceted multi uh, you know uh, dimensioned kind of uh, uh, stakeholder is very tough and that has always if you like haunted me right from the beginning from the oman mobile story all the way to yes. then merging the two companies again a whole new set of expectations came along and then you know uh, throughout the the competition as well because then uh, you have additional stakeholders like your competitor your suppliers that, and it's, it's it's quite challenging in a in a in a company like Omantel. It's a little bit limited when you are like in Tasnia right now. We have B two B. Okay. So you have your customers, your staff, your investors, and again, in the, the investor set is well defined. And uh, luckily for me, they're expert in the field. Okay. So in fact, I go back to them for help. I don't have to have different stories yeah. to different uh, stakeholders. Okay. Tell us about, uh, I, you, you moved from Oman Tel to Tasnia. Tell us about Tasnia as a company mm -hmm. and your role right now. I know you're the group CEO in Tasnia, but tell us about the company, what the company does and, and your role in the company. Well, uh, the, uh, the role as a CEO is to basically uh, supervise the existing operations and grow the operations by new joint ventures that bring in technology to Oman. Uh, the uh, objective of the company that was set by the, uh, the founders, uh, if you allow me to mention names, it's uh, Engineer Hilal uh, bin Hamad al Busaidi yeah. and uh, Engineer Yasser bin Saeed al Barami. These are innovative uh, businessmen, uh, entrepreneurs. They're the ultimate entrepreneurs uh, as far as I'm concerned. They've uh, been serving the industry in the service domain. Okay. And with the, um, uh, from their experience and also with the emergence of the uh, government initiative of ICV, they saw the opportunity to fill a gap. That gap being the product part. As you know, the ICV covers the omanization of people and then the services that you get rendered to you by SMEs that serve you and you contract them to do various subcontracts. And the third, and, uh, and it's the domain that we operate in, is the product and goods part, mm -hmm. which requires uh, either agency trading, which we were not into, they, we are not into, and it's by the vision of the two founders. Uh, and I subscribed to that uh, vision later after I was invited to lead the organization. And it is rather by creating an indigenous uh, manufacturing capacity that will allow us to transfer technology and knowledge mm -hmm. and create Omani goods and products okay. rather than just create a trading agency. And right now we are operating uh, from an ISWA workshop okay. where we are uh, producing a number of uh, uh, equipment that are essential for the uh, midstream, downstream 
and, and, and upstream as well uh, in the oil and gas technology. We are very proud of what we've achieved so far. We can build, we can right from the engineering, from the design of uh, pressure vessels, uh, valves, and uh, other uh, equipment, tanks, and so on. We can build all those in Oman. We built also around them an Omani team that is Mashallah. capable to uh, acquire knowledge from our fellow uh, co uh, international colleagues uh, that we, uh, you know, benefited from, but also our joint venture uh, principles. Okay. What keeps you motivated and keeps you pushing and excelling, Dr. Hamar? I think the, the number one fulfillment uh, is seeing other people succeeding because you've started something, you did something. And also success. I think success can be addictive. When you see something working, you know, you, you want to push it even further and then hand it over to someone else, move mm -hmm. on to create something else. And uh, it's a continuous story when, when you keep on. And we were talking about you, the story of your knowledge, Oman, mm -hmm. how you've handed it over two years ago and now handing it over again to someone else. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great model. Uh, that's, that's the ultimate self-fulfillment to create something have it, uh, you know, reach a certain stage where it's self-sustainable, moving it, hand it over to someone else, move on to create something new, more challenging perhaps, and leave a legacy. Yeah. That's, that's the motivation. You know, right now, at this stage of my career, the motivation is leaving a legacy. You know, for me, it's very, very easy. Whatever I do, I was just following your footsteps, Dr. Uh, Hamad. Well, well, but it would uh, be very nice to learn who is your role model. Your, I'll tell you what, your, your footsteps are, uh, I mean, uh, not only the, the, the actual physical fat, uh, fact of you being taller, uh, your, your, the, 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 your steps are wider and uh, more frequent, so I'm sure you'll go a much longer way. Uh, I have uh, been asked this question several times. I have refrained. I did use a name in the past, but I've refrained from giving one because it has evolved throughout my career because one, one goes, I love reading about successful people mm -hmm. and I move on. And in different stages of your life, you look for one that suits the current stage. So Mashallah. it would have been unfair to say uh, uh, to someone else. But if I was to name one is my father, because Mashallah. my father uh, is, is, was not educated in the modern sense of education as we know it. However, he pushed my brothers and I to get the highest, uh, brothers, sisters and I, uh, to uh, get the highest level of education possible and made education the, uh, uh, the one single uh, objective for him. And Mashallah. in fact, we didn't know that he was telling others that he will make sure that uh, we all achieve PhDs Mashallah. and in science and engineering uh, topics. So Alhamdulillah, uh, you know, uh, out of five, uh, we are the, f uh, the sibling of out of uh, four siblings and I, yeah. we have four PhDs in engineering and Mashallah. medical disciplines. Uh, so he is uh, uh, a very much a role model on setting a big dream, big long term objective that you don't necessarily uh, have uh, the, uh, if you like, the uh, tools to do now, but you know you will get it. I mean, that's a great inspiration. I mean, uh, it's going to take a long time when I start talking about the various situations that I had with my uh, uh, late father, may God bless his soul, well, where yeah. things that he said continue to guide my life until today. May Allah bless him, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I mean, inshallah. I want to know one question is that tell us a day in the life of Dr. Amr from morning to evening, how it is. Why am I asking this question? Why I got other people are asking me is that because you're involved in a number of activities. You are a group CEO of an, uh, one of the oil and gas companies, Tasnia. Uh, 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 how is your day like? How does it start like? It well, be very nice job. You see, um, some time ago, I read this book that's called Do Nothing. Okay. It just inspires you to get the right people. I, I've been blessed uh, throughout my career with uh, working with the right people around me, be it my bosses who give me the freedom to work and the guidance when I need it, the coaching that I require uh, and the motivation that everyone requires. And then colleagues around me who are committed to the objectives that we together set. And, you know, they not only uh, fulfill the, the objectives, they, you learn from them and they, they continue to help you grow. So uh, I manage by delegation, but I have 
a constant follow-up that I hope uh, if any of my colleagues are hearing it uh, are, are not bothered by. I, I, I tend to to like to know and then, yeah, then, then I, I, I tell them, you know, I like to know. I like to see where, I like to feel the pulse of the yeah. organization that Mashallah. I am managing, be it uh, an educational organization, a telecom or an oil and gas. I like to feel the, the pulse of the organization. And there are, if you like, those sensors, those people that you know will tell you the various, uh, uh, you know, indicators that you require on daily basis. So for me, a daily routine is to get those indicators. I don't feel good unless yeah. I get some indicators, even if they're not specific numbers, just to walk into somebody's office asking where the situation is on this project or this deal uh, gives me enough uh, energy for the day. Uh, I'm, you know, there is this illusion that a lot of my friends have that I am an early morning person. I have only become an early morning person lately, okay. but I haven't always been like that. And I find that I used to have my quiet time later in the night. Okay. I'm now having it early in the morning. Okay. And that's a quality time of about three hours. Mashallah. That is priceless. Okay. Mashallah. Yeah, and, um, and, and, and that really allows you to, to go out. And this is just a recent development in my lifestyle. Okay. But uh, earlier in my life, my quality time starts around 9 p.m. Okay. That's my reading time, my reflection time, my planning of the next day time and uh, if you talk to some of my uh, colleagues especially those of the past they'll tell you they receive calls at uh, midnight from me because <laughs> I was working on my tomorrow and I something I have to ask I have to plan or hmm. ask them to see me or I have to go and see them and and they're used to those late calls so I wasn't so much of an early morning person hmm. until recently Okay, much. Oh, that was a daily activity that you do. Yes. Mashallah. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Dr. Amr Rawas, uh, one of the leading CEOs in Oman. And to me, at least, he's, he's a leader himself. Mashallah. We're going to take a quick break, ladies and gentlemen, and revert back and talk about how to become a successful CEO. Welcome back to Knowledge Talks, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Tariq Al Albarwani, along with our studio engineer, DJ Saleh, with you here live today on Oman Radio FM 90.4. Our topic today, ladies and gentlemen, is about becoming a successful CEO. And we have in the studio today, not only a successful, but an award-winning personality and a CEO, Dr. Amr Rawas, who is currently the group CEO of Tasnir Oil and Gas Company. Uh, Dr. Amr, you have been the CEO of a leading telecom company in Oman and served many le leadership roles till date. What advice would you give to youth aspiring to reach such a position, let's say for general manager or CEO per se? What advice would you give to them for them to become one and a successful one? You asked me earlier about uh, the vision and the purpose. I think they have to have a purpose uh, put in place for, for what they want to be. But then that has to be followed immediately by empowering themselves to fulfill that purpose. You know, uh, you know, if you want to go swimming, you have to have a swimsuit and, and, and the safety gear and so on. So here you empower yourself uh, through knowledge and skills and attitudes. Okay. And then uh, what's required is a lot of hard work. And I, if I was, uh, whenever I'm asked and if I was to put it on a, a single word, it's hard work. And... Uh, uh, followed by commitment and it's it's commitment to the organization and of course the organization is can be defined as the uh, uh, the people uh, the the uh, processes and uh, rules regulations and the tools and and the focus here is uh, mostly on commitment to the purpose of the organization and the people okay the part in the middle which is the system the processes and the tools uh, if you get too committed to those, then they become an impediment. You're, if you're committed to a certain process, you don't change it, so you guard the, the rules, so to speak, rather than uh, change the rules and move on. So commitment in, uh, to the organization is, in my opinion, it's commitment to the people and the purpose of the organization. Okay. If the purpose is to serve the people, then it's the service that you deliver. Okay. You have led, uh, uh, in, uh, you have been a leader in the education sector, you have been a leader in the telecom sector, and now in oil and gas. Can a CEO of one company or industry lead another industry? Of course, it's, it's, uh, 
you know, uh, I don't know if you know the background, I actually started in oil and gas uh, before I moved to academia and then uh, uh, to telecoms. However, I say a leader is a leader. Once you acquire the, uh, the minimum uh, requisite set of skills to lead an organization, you're able to move from one sector to the other. Okay. But then you, when you move from one sector to uh, the other, you have to put in your plan that you'll spend at least the first two years learning the job. Okay. And then maybe the following two years mastering the job. Okay. And then throughout your career with the institution, you'll be building a, uh, a successor, a succession planning. So you're, from your fourth year onwards, you're planning your next job, okay. preparing yourself that. for your next job. I mean, this allows you to basically have the mindset to learn at the beginning, regardless, even if you're moving from a telecom sector to a telecom sector, you still have to prepare yourself for a learning curve that allows you, of course, the learning curve will be easier uh, if you're moving to the same sector, it'll be steeper if you're moving to a different, a whole new sector, but it will depend on how you prepare yourself mentally okay. to learn and the people that you have around you. Okay. It's all about the people. It's all about the people, mashallah. What is your opinion of the Omani leadership today? I think we have a lot of successful people uh, around that have uh, succeeded in various sectors. Uh, people tend to talk mostly about the telecom sector and the banking sector, which are the most omanized of all uh, big sectors. But uh, the oil and gas sector, uh, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, the, the number of leaders who are either leading their own uh, enterprises, uh, who were uh, entrepreneurs and now are leaders of sizable companies, and those who are leading uh, companies on behalf of others in this sector. The sector has... Uh, evolved from dependence on international companies to a lot of local companies operating in the sector with uh, a uh, you know a lot of leadership skill that is demonstrated uh, not only in meetings where we're meeting with competitors and uh, uh, service providers or uh, in some cases customers uh, but also in the individuals that you see uh, in oil and gas events uh, on day to day that is, uh, you know, thankfully to various schools in the oil and gas business, like PDO uh, is the biggest school in the oil and gas industry. Uh, and, and, and again, uh, it's also the fact that a lot of these young Omanis took the risk and left a stable job in a, a national company like PDO and started their own businesses that have really put them through a, an exposure that is unmatched when you look at people who are just moving from one job to the other. Okay. You have been involved uh, with many education, development and systems and bodies here in Oman, mashallah. Now, many of the guests have mentioned that a lack of skilled local resources is a challenge here in Oman. Do you believe that young Omanis passing out of colleges and universities in Oman are skilled or trained enough to work in a corporate environment? We well, see, we are, uh, you know, on a daily basis being served by a number of corporations. These are banks, these are telecom companies, oil companies, and uh, airline companies, and so on. And when you go, you're facing an Omani individual that is serving you. Yeah. When you go to do, do doing business with those organizations, you're faced with either an Omani executive or a senior executive or a leader in these uh, organizations. When Omanis are given the opportunity, they prove themselves. Uh, you see, it's, it's not and Omani nature is human nature. When you give them the opportunity, the challenge, they go and get it. Okay. And if you give them hope, hope is the best motivator. When you tell people, go get it, this is yours. And, and it's been proved time after time in scientific research that autonomy is allowing people to, to produce on their own, allow them a chance to innovate, to do things their way and telling them what needs to be done they go and excel. And there are so many examples of Omanis here and there. Uh, I think there's a lot of hype of about the Omani skilled forces. I think the, the uh, formula of comparison is not a fair one. You're comparing young Omanis who are graduate from uh, predominantly academically based organizations that emphasize less on the skill, more on the uh, knowledge acquisition, not the skill acquisition. Mm -hmm perhaps even less than de uh, than uh, desired at the attitude part. Yeah. So when they come in to work, 
they're not they're given a very specific job description to do and they are compared against an international professional mm. who is perhaps 10 years older have started his or her career back home okay. worked under very tough conditions yeah. acquired the the skill and the work aptitude and is working in a demanding environment how can you compare the two i think it's a f unfair com comparison okay. when umanis are put to the test and given the chance to learn they have proven themselves time after another okay mashallah given the current oil prices uh, could you explain the futuristic outlook on oman economy you know like all oil producing uh, countries uh, we are affected uh, there's no denial of that i mean and the the fact that it is affecting not only the uh, the income but the cash flow is is clear to everyone uh, uh, but however uh, this is the uh, the longest sustained oil prices depression so far uh, i think the second longest actually and it is allowing us a chance to diversify if this was just a, a swift recovery i don't think we will have the same commitment to diversify the economy we're seeing a number of uh, very strong uh, and effective uh, measures taken by government to diversify the economy i don't think these will have the same momentum and the same push behind them if the recovery was faster but yeah i i think uh, this is leading us to open up doors more to foreign direct investment uh, allowing us i think and i hope uh, to allow more freedom for young omani entrepreneurs to basically start businesses i mean for example if you want to open up the um, uh, tourism sector which was one of the most promising sectors as far as i'm concerned mm. oman is very inviting as a society but also very uh, attractive as a uh, topography and uh, nature uh, but if the omanis have to invest millions in order to qualify for the various conditions for you to be a tourist institution that will never help in the diversification will never help in creating jobs i think those barriers of entry should be lowered for young omanis who want to engage in this sector and i'm sure this crisis that we are in now in terms of the oil prices will allow these uh, regulatory institutions to lower the barriers Uh, and allow more Omanis to get engaged in various sectors that were prohibitive in the past in terms of the barrier to entry. Okay. Um, you find uh, a lot of uh, uh, people um, uh, that are aspiring to become successful CEOs. Uh, uh, some of them, uh, entrepreneurs, owners of businesses, are saying that you need to attain certain training or go to the university in order to get a degree or a master's or a PhD in order to become a successful uh, CEO. And you've got others who give an example like Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, or the Facebook uh, Mark Zuckerberg, that they are a dropout where they become successful CEOs around the world. Nevertheless, it always, when you get an accredited uh, uh, advice from someone who has done it great, and especially in Omani, like yourself, uh, you, are, you, are, you are a successful CEO. You have many times have won an awards, which that goes without saying, mashallah. Uh, what would be your advice for someone who's listening right now? Say, I would like to become like uh, Dr. Amor. I would like to become successful CEO. What is your advice when it comes to this point? As I said earlier, you know, a clear purpose, hard work and commitment to that purpose and to uh, succeeding. Now, what it also requires is working with the right ecosystem around you. If you are an entrepreneur, do you have the right partners? Do you have the right support? the right staff, the right choice of customers, right of domain to work with. I mean, you know, there are so many people who started companies and called themselves CEO and started running them as CEOs. Mm. Now, it takes a while. You need to actually work for somebody else in order to become a proper executive. Mm. However, this only became so 300 years ago. Before 300 years ago, everybody works for themselves and they manage themselves. Inshallah. So we should encourage more and more people to manage themselves. But you can't suddenly move from being an entrepreneur who manages his own company into an executive that runs a multinational company or uh, a public uh, stock company because then you're responsible for 
uh, you know, the livelihood of many people who bought your share or even the people who uh, use your service. So then you need to actually do the self-empowerment, which I talked about, which is learning everything that a CEO needs to learn, which is uh, finance, people management. These are two essential skills that you have to learn. I did four co courses of finance uh, plus additional help by basically getting coaching from bankers and from finance people. I actually was um, selfish in that I made specific friends in those fields to learn from them because uh, as a, a, a non-financial executive, okay, you, learn, you need to learn the basics, which I did, but then most of your role is corporate finance, which is learned more by experience, by working with people. Of course, there are co courses for that as well, which I took. Legal, you know, you're going to sign agreements on behalf of larger institutions, mm -hmm. not your responsibility for your own company with an LLC cover. When you're SAOG or a, a joint venture with an international company, the responsibilities are greater. So you need to actually acquire very specific skills. And of course, then you go uh, along with, uh, you know, uh, practicing like a leader before you become a CEO, a leader. Uh, has to understand the environment he's operating in, understand the customers. You know, you start from there, mm -hmm. the customers, and then you have to understand your employees because if you have uh, unmotivated uh, employees, they're not going to serve your customers well. And if your customers are not happy, eventually your investors are not going to be happy. Good. When you start your own company, you require a different set of skills that I am now acquiring. I have to say that I've found over the last two years it's very difficult to become an entrepreneur, okay. particularly in Oman. I mean, there are so many hurdles and obstacles that you have to face in order to succeed. And I'm now learning it. It's, it's, there are two different set of skills, entrepreneurship and executive leadership. Okay. And each one requires a different set of uh, skills, knowledge and aptitude. Okay. There's two questions that I would like to ask you. We'll start, on, we'll start the first one with, what would you say is a characteristic of an individual that one should mm -hmm. have in order to become a successful CEO? And the other one would be uh, 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 the challenges, in your opinion, uh, that uh, CEOs face. So others would like to get into the role, they should you know, ask the question whether I should really get into the role or not. You know, many people think that becoming a CEO is just that you become you know, the top boss and you can do everything. If I was <coughs> to mention one uh, as a skill is communication skills. Okay. Uh, I was reading, uh, I think it was a research from uh, Carnegie Mellon University in the US that 85% uh, of your success comes from your uh, uh, skills rather than your knowledge acquired and qualifications. And out of those skills, the chief is uh, communication skills. Remember, I said earlier, when you are a CEO, you have to communicate with all the stakeholders so you become if you like the go-between and the, your message has to be clear to your staff to your customers to the whole ecosystem around you uh, particularly if you have complex stakeholders so communication skill is the uh, single most significant skill okay. that you require dr amor uh, the, the 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 only challenge i personally have is that i've got just few minutes we're almost done with the program but definitely i would like to invite you again the reason is because i have a lot of questions from people who have sent to me, uh, me personally as well, to learn from you, but we just have uh, uh, 60 minutes for the program, so I'll definitely be inviting you again. But what I would like to know now is, what is next for Dr. Amor? Well, you see, um, uh, I selectively chose the, the current career, I mean, to work with inspiring entrepreneurs so that I will learn for them to, from them to be an entrepreneur on my own right. I've also worked with them with their permission to start my own business on parallel, something that I think in the five years that I would do with Tasnia, uh, if I go in this revolving five years personal plan, I could then run my own uh, business and it would be hopefully in, in uh, the agriculture and uh, uh, ornamental gardening uh, sector. However, sure. if that sector is not so rewar rewarding financially, I'm thinking also of, of the uh, trading sector because I see that this sector is uh, predominantly uh, managed and operated by international people who we can learn from and sort of start doing it uh, ourselves. Uh, because when the economies get depressed because of, uh, uh, you know, the prevailing oil uh, prices or any other uh, uh, instance, then you would need 
the, these skills uh, indigenously and the Omanis have always been traders and uh, uh, I was born into a trading family Mashallah. and I would like to basically do that aside from the actual operation of uh, an agricultural company called Hassad. But the choice of this particular company that I'm in because the owners of this company, one of them is my chairman, uh, are entrepreneurs and okay. uh, I, every time I sit with them I learn something about the kind of risks an entrepreneur has to deal with and the kind of decisions an entrepreneur does uh, take and how to forge partnerships and how to actually walk out of our uh, partnership if you have and that all comes as part of my preparation for the next stage of my career inshallah whatever you do dr amor inshallah ta'ala uh, 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 whether you're starting up a new company or whatever you, you you are going to be launching please don't forget me and if i'm gonna if it's required <laughs> for me to send you cv i'll send you i want to become as successful as yourself i won't forget you because i will need you <laughs> and need your advice dr amor thank you very very much for joining us today on Oman radio fm 90.4 to share knowledge indeed not only myself but i'm sure everyone has learned quite a lot from you today. I would like to take this opportunity to wish you the very best and thank you very much for joining us today, Dr. Amor. Thank you. It was a great pleasure. and It's always a pleasure to talk to you and uh, thanks for the time. You're very welcome. Dear all, Knowledge Oman is hosting Dr. Amar Arawas tomorrow at the lounge to speak about social entrepreneurship. The session starts at 6.30 p.m. at the lounge. Don't miss the opportunity to attend and learn directly from Dr. Amar, wealth of rich knowledge, mashallah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our program for this week. I hope you all had an intriguing time with us. Let us catch up again next week on Tuesday, same time at 5 p.m. for a knowledge session. I'm Tariq Al Barwani along with our studio engineer, DJ Al Aremi, wishing you all a happy uh, week, inshallah. Ma'asalama.